We're back on Inside Tennessee with our regular panelists, Don and Susan, and our guest this morning, Representative Elect Diana Harshbarger. Susan? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to have you on our show. I met you a couple of times out on the campaign trail up in the Upper East and was very impressed with your style and your ability to connect with people, so congratulations. Um, I, I, sometime I want to talk to you about having 16 opponents and how you won that race, uh, pretty phenomenal. But let's follow up a little bit on, on education. A lot of Republicans go to Congress or to the Senate and they talk about shutting down the Department of Education on a national level and bringing everything back home. Um, where, where do you stand on that? Have you thought about that? Do you plan on encouraging the Federal Department of Education to get more involved or, or would you like to see more home control of our schools? Well, uh, first of all, every family has their opinion on how they want their children educated. And, uh, you know, it's their choice, bottom line. I, I haven't thought about dismantling the Department of Education. That's never entered my mind. You know, there's some real reforms, <laughs> I'm sure, that would, uh, that need to take place, but uh, you know, you can work with people. You don't have to dismantle things in order to make them better. And like I said before, families have a right to send their children where they think they're gonna get the best education and it should be uh, in their hands. I understand there's, there's dilemma and there's discussions on both sides. You take a child out of the school system and then that takes money away from that school system that the teacher can't recoup. And, and in a lot of cases, teachers spend their own money to help these students in the first place. So there has to be some type of, um, you know, rebalancing. And why are some schools better than educating than others? Is it the teachers? Is it the parents? It, it, what system is it that causes those children to fail right down the road and in one school to be the top of the line right right to two miles down the road. You know, there, there has to be some kind of consistency in that education to where every child gets educated and um, that we're not leaving anybody out to fall through the cracks. And I see what the pandemic has done to our educational system. And the repercussions from some of the studies that I've read, uh, can, they're gonna last for years, if not 20 years down the road. And that's a travesty. And the ones that are in private schools, which everybody can't afford to put their children in private school, those are the kids that are going to excel because they haven't fell through the cracks. They have been able to continue the education and have the one-on-one -on -one help that they need to succeed. Thank you. Good point. Don, go ahead. So, uh, con sure. Congresswoman uh, elect Harshbarger, congratulations. Susan pointed out you, uh, you fought through a, a true jungle primary that uh, every critter in the jungle uh, apparently entered the primary that you were in. And uh, uh, that has to be tough. I guess the first question I might have, uh, what, uh, with a house rep spot, you have to run every two years. You literally have to start running the moment you're elected for the next time. Do you have real concerns about uh, a serious challenge again in your primary uh, it, you won by 19 point something percent over 16 point percent. So uh, it's it's going to be a mess. Do you hear anything all, right now in your district where you might get challenged again in the primary in two years? Well, Don, that, that's a great question. I mean, the reason I got not, if you look back at some of these races where there may be in 12 or 13, 14 uh, uh, people in the race, you know, they didn't get much more than that if they even got 19 percent. And you can't mm -hmm. get much more than that if you're if you've got 16 people running. I'll put it to you that That's way. Right. But the beautiful thing is that from the statistics, I garnered more votes than anyone has ever garnered in this district. And I'm won by a bigger percentage of anybody that's won in this district in their first go. And going back to your question, am I worried about? this running the election in two years anybody would be crazy not to be afraid that somebody might come after them because you can't accomplish what the things that i want to accomplish in two years it'll take a, it'll take longer than that 
And, you know, you just prepare and you take care of the people at this local level, your, your friends and family, which is what I call constituents, you better take care of them. And that's where my focus is going to be. If we're not in the majority and we're a minority, then that focus better be on your district no matter what. And that's, that's my plan and I'm sticking to it. Well, I think your district has shown you're pretty safe in the general. Uh, I guess what I'm thinking of is the primary. Uh, uh, I don't think the first district has elected a Democrat in probably as long as the second district here in Knoxville. So uh, I, I wonder what might happen in your primary in two years. So. Well, let's get back well, to the issues because I want to talk about uh, what's on that agenda. You mentioned economic development, but also Representative Rowe has been a voice in Congress for the medical community. What do you think the federal government should be doing about health care? And I'm going to begin that uh, questioning with this question. Is health care a right of every American? Well, health care should be accessible to every American. Now, the bottom line is this, and they're never going to be turned away if they go to the ER or in different modalities. But you know what's happening now is this health care system and i don't know if the republicans have a plan or not but my intent is to be ready in two years when we do take the house back to have a health care policy that is centered around individualized medicine personalized medicine the democrats have a, a great way of messaging and everyone knows what uh, Medicare for all means everybody knows it's either going to come down to personalized versus socialized medicine and the government's not real good at taking care of a lot of things and so I don't know that I would want to put my health care system in the government's hand nobody knows better than the health care professionals themselves and what our patients need for their family than the average American does. And, you know, if you give them the option of personalized versus socialized, they're gonna take personalized at every count. So what I'm gonna do in the next two years is be ready with a healthcare plan going forward. So we have the opportunity, bam, it's gonna be there. There's not gonna be any question because people are not gonna sit back and wait this time for a healthcare policy plan to come up. And then they're like, uh oh, we don't have it. And you've had a ton of time to do it. That's not acceptable. We're going to pick up on that line of questioning and more issues. Susan, we'll let you jump in. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back right after this.